Hello. Welcome. Today I, my name is Hussein bin Haniba. I'm going to uh, talk about this a very simple topic on chemistry, which is uh, can the study of the change. So those are my Instagram. I uh, please please well, most of you are most welcome to follow the, my Instagram and those are my YouTube channel you can search my name who's in Haniba and you will find out the video is uploaded over there so let's start with the topic the chemistry topic okay so most of you you have a difficulty what's chemistry what do you mean by a chemistry chemistry is actually a study of matter what do I mean by a study of matter? Anything that has mass and occupied space is considered as a chemistry. So when you have a mass and you are occupied with the space, you are a chemistry. So the matter can exist in different form. It can exist in solid, liquid, and of course it can exist in a gas state if you notice solid liquid gas all uh, have a mass and they do occupy the space so in the chemistry study we are only going to focus on solid state substance a liquid substance and of course we go for the gas substance as well so uh, we slowly go into the topic okay chemistry in the 21st century if you can uh, if you notice Chemistry is a very most important topic. If you are in the science fields, definitely you must take the chemistry subject. Either the combinations could be the combination could be either uh, physics, chemistry, bio, or either physics, chemistry, or biochemistry. So I will say those are the uh, 21st century the most of into important of the chemistry not only the health science medicines energy environment it is actually it is applicable in a huge amount of applications so those are the examples of the use of a chemistry in a nowadays so let's slowly move into the topics <laughs> and those are the material science when we are talking about chemistry of course, of course, we are more in go into the topics such as we have like uh, topics such as polymer substances. Now we are going to the nanotechnology. Those are the chemistry fields, a subtopic of it. So you can see more and more chemistry topic is actually over there. So those are the subtopics that you can have a look. So let's look what we are going to look the next one. Yes. <coughs> guys this is what i have told you in the very beginning of the uh, class i was it the uh, video that chemistry you can't see with uh, your naked eye because it is made of particles it is made of particles which is we can't see with the naked eye the particle sometimes is referred as atom molecule or ion when I say it is an atom, it's referred to only a single particle, single substances. And when I say it is a molecule, it refers to atom, a few atoms, or it's combined together to form a bigger lump. And of course, when I say ion, it's actually a substance or particle with positively charged or a negatively charged a positively charged substance is called as a cation and a negatively charged substance is called as a anion so as you can see over here at the beginning of the chapter i have told you the substance can exist in either in a solid form liquid form or gas form okay so those are the different states of it uh, the, the substance can exist so over here they introduce a two simple word which is a macroscopic remember when I say it is a macroscopic which is you can see through your naked eye without any problem such as human you can see through a naked eye therefore it is actually a macroscopic but nevertheless another terms is a microscopic which is <coughs> microscopic is a very discrete particle you can't see with the naked eye where you might need 
advanced instruments to look the the structure of the atom itself the arrangements example and let's look at here we know over here you have a fair iron iron is in a solid state and you have some molecules over here the gas molecule oxygen gas so when the iron and oxygen combine they're going to form a iron oxide iron oxide this is a solid material but the question is can we see the iron oxide the arrangement of the particle with our naked eye no therefore it is called as a microscopic okay you we can't see the arrangements of the particle of the fe and also oxygen in the substance so it is a microscopic substances so at here we learn about the macroscopic and microscopic words it is the most important terms in the chemistry so let's look when we are talking in chemistry chemistry is a study systematic study of course we have a scientific method it's a scientific uh, method it's a scientific uh, approach where you it is started when you have a problem in chemistry when you have a problem in chemistry then you slowly for so you when you have a problem you observe the problem then representations and interpretations until you find a conclusion okay scientific method is a scientific approach to research so let's say you find out there is a problem how to solve the problem then you find out all the variable we have a manipulated variable then we have a responding variables and of course we have a constant variable you find out from that one the moment you have find out those variable then we slowly build the hypothesis hypothesis is actually a simple statement that we have done before we carry out an experiment so hypothesis hypothesis is a tentative explanations for a set of observations so what is going to be that so we are going to give a simple assumptions okay testers and modified so <coughs> of course we go to further we have more slides of course yes guys this one and you can have a look a law is what in chemistry you will come across a lot the word of a law law is a consist statement it's actually a statement to show the relationships between a phenomena that is always the same under the same condition it means when you are put a word a law is actually when they say we have a certain faraday law it is mean that the law is the word of the law is quite strong word the moment you use the word of law it must applicable to all situations in all situation such as a simple examples over here force what how to calculate the force is a mass times with accelerations this is called as a law it is a general true it's a general true for all different situations but when you come to theory look at the definition of the theory is a unifying principle that explain a body of facts or those law that are based on them so such as it is explaining what is actually going on into the system so i have a theory theory of what atomic theory atomic theory says that uh, a substance it's made of matter what is a matter is anything have a mass and occupy space what is that that is called a particle so that is a theory so that's the difference between law and theory so let's move on to the next one <coughs> more hypothesis okay so we have introduced to you a theory a law now we go into a hypothesis when i'm saying i'm ta talking about hypothesis normally please keep in mind hypothesis is a statement before an experiment it is done before an experiment the hypothesis is not necessary to be always the true or always the right it could be it could be sometime before we run an experiment before we run an experiment it could be right or after we, uh, we think okay uh, 
a substance due to this and this and this and because of this. This is what we believe. But after an experiment, our earlier statement, which is we call as a hypothesis, might be agree agree with what we have plan in the first place or it might not agree with what we are doing now so it's mean hypothesis shouldn't it not necessarily to be always right so a simple example hypothesize the universal this is a simple example uh, so normally hypothesis will be supported with experimental data experimental data then okay we go further Chemistry in the very beginning. I have told you that what is chemistry It's a study of a matter Matter what is a matter <coughs> matter is anything that has a mass and occupies space which the matter can uh, have a, a mass and occupies space and It can exist in a solid liquid or gas either in the gas form such as why might have a solid sodium chloride That is a matter and I do, I might have also a gas, oxygen gas, or liquid, a molten naphthalene substance. Is that that is also a matter? Okay, now that is a matter. We clear about it. Now we move to a substance. What do I mean by a substance? Substance is a form of matter that has a definite composition and distinct properties. What do I mean by that? Okay, so substance over here is mean you have a chemical formula such as you have a liquid nitrogen. When I say liquid nitrogen, what is the formula of a liquid nitrogen? It's a N2. You have a definite composition. So liquid nitrogen is made of nitrogen atoms and another nitrogen atom. So this is two nitrogen atoms combined to form a nitrogen liquid nitrogen so when i say gold what is the formula of gold au so it have a formula over there okay simple to make it much more simple let's talk about water what is the formula for water h2o that h2o you have a formula that formula is called as a substance okay let's slowly move to the next one uh, adhere a mixture remember guys in chemistry you will come across a lot of this word either you will come across a homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture remember in the first place what I mean by a mixture when you have a solute you have a solute you mix into a solvent and solvent a solute and mix into a solvent then you will have a mixture it is solid over here it could be more than one so mixture is a combination of two or more substance in which the substance retain their distinct identity i give you a very simple example you take a salt you put it into a water you mixed it so that is a mixture of a salt solution another example you take a water uh, you take a sugar and put it into a water you mix it again you will have a uh, sugar solutions now we slowly go into the examples uh, where mixture can be further divided to homogeneous and homogeneous mixture when i say a homogeneous mixture the composition of the mixture is the same throughout this this what do i mean by a homogeneous mixture when you mix together you can't see any phase separation in that particular uh, system i'll give you a simple example uh, say let's say i have a gas jar in that particular gas jar i put the oxygen gas and i put a hydrogen um, and maybe a nitrogen gas oxygen gas and nitrogen a nitrogen gas when i mix after a while we can see any differences or any phase separation in that gas jar therefore we call 
in that particular gas jar it have a homogeneous mixture between the gas high oxygen gas and nitrogen gas more examples uh, is given over there a soft drink let's say we are talking about energetic drink or maybe we're talking about uh, cool drinks or any sugar drinks or something energetic drinks when you take out the energetic drink we pour into a glass can you actually see any phase separation in that solution no you can't see it that's why we call it is a homogeneous and when when i say heterogeneous mixture always keep in the mind when it is heterogeneous it is not in a uniform throughout example a simple example i give you let's say you have a uh, oil and you try to mix with water after you put it in the water into a uh, oil and wa water you put it in a cup cup of water then you try to mix it you try to stir it after a while you will notice the oil and the water still can't uh, mix together it will separate to two different layer therefore it is what we call as a heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture stand for it actually can't mix and over here they give you some simple example you take some sand and you try to put some iron fillings the iron do you think the sand and iron will mix no you can easily separate them by using a simple magnet okay so let's look more examples over here this is what i said when it is a homogeneous when the substance is homogeneous it's very easy to separate them according sorry when the substance is a heterogeneous it is very easy to separate them okay such as over here you have a iron filling with the sand you can easily separate them with using a magnet that is what i'm saying that is what a homo uh, heterogeneous system can be separated so when you can separate them easily this is what we call a physical mean so physically separated can be used to separate a mixture into its pure compound component i give you another example let's say you have a cup of water and you have a sand in that particular cup of water do you think you can separate them by physically yes of course you can separate them by just filter them using a filter paper the water and the sand can be separated easily therefore this is what we call a physical mean the same go to a distillations in a petroleum uh, let's say a uh, fossil fuels we have a petroleum uh, refinery factory when we get a crude oil when we get a pure crude oil it's actually a mixture of um, heterogeneous mixture of petrol diesel kerosene bitumen etc and etc where you can separate them physically by using fractional distillation method that is what we call a freak a physical method separations so I do have more slide to go as you can see uh, yes we're going to have we will discuss this in a next video please stay tuned with me for more video thank you